going to take it so soon the boat gets back. Okay? I think it's a pretty good life there. Understand by boat. Well, they are all uh, professional seamen, and bad weather is just the same for them. Then, I mean, they don't get seasick no more, so that doesn't bother them. Okay, they're working thirty and thirty, I guess now, thirty days on and thirty days off. So, I think that's a better job than I'm doing. Like, first of all, it's not so dangerous, and secondly, they don't have to work. it's very difficult. Consequently, a lot of marriages break up, but mine hasn't broken up. And I've been at sea since I left school in 1955. Depends on the person, I think, and your partner as well. But you miss the children growing up. That's one thing you do miss. This job cost my marriage. Because I was always under rigs. You know, I used to be in charge for four rigs and move the rigs all the time. Doesn't make any difference. It was Christmas or a New Year or so. I was mostly offshore and doesn't help my marriage at all. I'm deaf where it broke up after 18 years. We used to travel together all over the world and then I had three children and they went to about six, seven different schools. And then one day she got tired of being a gypsy, so she wanted to settle down somewhere. And I tried in the States, but I couldn't do it, so I got back offshore. And then shortly after that, the marriage broke up. So I would not say it is a good life for marriage people. Everything what you see here, safety wise, lifeboats, rockets, what we got, life jackets, everything is like a ship. We're out of the water. With other words, we, if we're in the water, we're just like a ship. We're floating like a ship. But right now we're out of the water, so we're not dependent on weather. We can drill ahead in any kind of weather. The maximum uh, wind we can still drill ahead and the rig will stay on its three legs. It's 120 miles per hour. That is the advantage of a jack-up rig. Once a week, we have to have a training session to make those people aware of, it, of the dangers they're living in and they're ready any time, night or a day, to run to their muster station because that is the last resort we can leave the rig if something really happens. Well, I have been doing this for too many years. I have seen really uh, galleys burning out and I was in there trying to fight the fire. But this I cannot prove to you because we cannot burn our galley up. But I have done it many times. Over 25 years I've seen many fires on rigs and fought many fires. Control room fire team. Yes, go ahead, Oscar. You did isolate the power now for the galley come back. That's a roger. We are here just like uh, old friends. And doesn't make any difference if it's a captain or a rustabout or a... It's not like the old style with uniform and I'm the captain and uh, you just cannot come in my room, you have to knock the door. This is all over. It used to be on oil rigs like that, but that is all over. 18 bodies to come. What have we got? We got that right. <laughs> One time in the Persian Gulf, I was on the rig moving the rig with eight legs and five of the legs broke off and fall off. Well, we got in a storm. And was a jack up rig with eight legs. Five of the legs broke off above the barge, not below. And so, well, we had to abandon the barge. And we tried to get in the lifeboat, but the lifeboat was gone. The mechanic le let himself down and took the lifeboat and took off on his own. That is the true story. So there we were standing there. Okay, that's the end of the corridor there. And abandon rig. How we can go back to work. Okay. 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 Well, I think I'm going to retire in a, in a couple of years, two years probably from now on. That's it for me. I got a little saving. The 
little money my wife left me, the rest she took. So I'm going to retire. <laughs> That's the old story. <laughs> old old fifth story, you know. There's a high divorce rate in the oil field, as you probably already know. Probably up in the region of 90%. And um, it's just something you have to work at. I got married, my wife knew I was in the oil field when I got married. And uh, so far, we're still married. You're one of the 10%? One of the 10% at the moment. You can tell with instrumentation if, for example, drilling fast, drilling slow. We have instruments for the pumps. Well, we can't see down there, but we learn by experience to read our instruments, and then we can tell what's going on, or hopefully what's going on down the hole. It would be nice to be able to see down there, and then it would make the job a lot simpler. The basic thing is that they have to drill a hole um, and they need the power to drill it and basically that's our function is to keep the power getting up to the rig floor uh, and that keeps everybody happy. <laughs> we make our own water when they're drilling pretty heavy we can make enough fresh water for the whole rig's consumption depending on what they're doing on the rig floor how much power they require depends on how many engines we put on to make uh, the electricity for, for them to um, keep their equipment going, really. Since the slump has come, um, the shore industries have caught up and um, I'm afraid we, as I say, we, we appreciate our time off. So therefore, that makes it worthwhile coming out to the rig. Um, the golden years have definitely gone, and I don't think they'll ever come back. Yeah, man, that's me. 
There's a lot of them friends really, it's like a family because you have to get on. You live ever so close in a small room and you work in a close environment and it does affect the personalities in the end. If you fall out with somebody, you know, you've still got to see them every day for a long time, for a long period. So everybody seems to get on. When I got divorced, I was a joiner and I was working a lot of hours. You know, we'd just got married. I'd only been married 18 months and she wanted a lot of things. I was working hard to get the money and you miss out. So once I got divorced, I thought, I don't really want the money, I want the time. And when I looked around, this is the job, what I chose to give me a lot of time off. You're working with somebody. You're not just working with them, you've got to live with them. You know, you might not share a cabin with them, but you've still got to live with them. You know, you just, you can't have enemies on it, put it that way. You've, you, you might not make friends, but you've got to be friendly. You, you, this is a new place to have enemies. That's the good thing about working offshore. Normally the friends you make, they'll do anything for you. They are pretty good. You're constantly got the noise going around you. You're aware that you're two, two feet away from the work. You can't get away from it. It would be nice if we could knock off every night and go ashore for a couple of beers and come back. The social life is very limited. And uh, it's an acquired taste. It doesn't suit everybody. That's not a nice What a shit. I've been in the oil field 20 years now, and I've only just been promoted to till pusher, and so I don't really expect to uh, go any higher than what I am at the moment. Um, the job's getting more technical 
these days, and uh, it's, it's a younger man's job. So things aren't as easy as they used to be. Before, you, if you could work hard physically, then you, you were a good hand on the rig. But now you have to know a little bit more than just working hard. Some people find it no problem. I've always found it a problem. I count the days. I come on 21 days, I know the next day I have 20 days. And maybe this makes it go longer. But uh, in this day and age, it's a good job and it pays money. And I mean, to give it up and then suddenly have nothing, it would be a difficult thing to do. I get a great sense of silence when I get off the helicopter. It's a wonderful feeling. You don't realize all the background noise you have on the rig. And that is always the first thing that dawns on me when you step off the helicopter and the helicopter rotary stops and it just feels so nice, quiet and peaceful. Like a bottle, bottle cap in 